this is Grace. Hi, this is Allentail, but you can call me Matthew. This is Hannah. Hi, this is Emily. Hi, I'm Abby. Hi, this is Jamie. And, and this, this is, is Adventures Ad in Absurdity. Hi. Hi! Welcome back, everybody. We've got Abby, Emily, Grace, and Hannah today. Woo. Woo. And we're discussing Woo. the battle from album five. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. So Matthew has now joined the group chat. <laughs> Hi! Oh, shoot, the episode's already started the recording. My bad. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. The battle, part one and part two, were written and directed by Phil Lawler and originally aired on August 19th, 1989. The summary is, Dr. Regis Blackard and Richard Maxwell uses a modem to hack into wit's end to try and steal a computer program, producing some tragic side effects for the group. Um, I didn't take notes this week because, y'all, like I moved today. <laughs> I listened to oh, the damn, episode yeah. three times, though, and twice today. <laughs> That's dedication, folks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much I took in of it, though. <laughs> Mood. It's okay. Richard's lines in this episode are so iconic. Like, I felt like I could quote all of them. They're so good. Absolutely. Same. Yeah. I love how when Chris first came on, she, like, read, read those Bible verses, and she's like, I wanted to start you off with some comfort, because y'all are gonna need it for today. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> we about to traumatize some people up in here. Uh. Why why don't they have that at the start of every like serious episode instead of Phil Lolly like please get your parents uh, in <laughs> no. a very sinister voice like we might traumatize you soon instead of God will work all things for good <laughs> Romans eight twenty eight <laughs> I know, fun, kids. Like, oh, they're so like this is gonna be really intense and now they're just like eh, it's fine. <laughs> you know, Emily thinks she's gonna die, but I guess uh, I shouldn't say that too loud well because that can also apply to myself and people can hear me. <laughs> 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 okay, um, I can't remember how the episode starts, though, even though I listened to it too many times today. I think. Um, <laughs> That's okay. They're at the... Sh- yeah, oh, they, oh, oh, is that at Blackard's Castle? It. At Blackard's yeah. Castle, yeah. Right, yeah. It's like mad chaos, and Eugene and Wet are like, what oh, is this yeah. monstrosity? Yeah. yeah, kids are going crazy. I mean, it yeah. sounds like they're having fun, but there's like no rules, rules. or boundaries. <laughs> And these kids are like, you know, running all over the place, screaming and throwing things and fighting and arguing. Yeah. And yeah. they come yeah, in and it's like, um. Yeah, it's Doctor's like, hey, like you, Jeremy, yeah. break it up and whatever, which kind of was a slap in the face to me. And I was like, excuse me? Why are you talking to me all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Shame on you, Matthew. <laughs> Dang it, Matt. Dang, I, I got caught fighting Jeremy in Blackwood's castle. <laughs> How dare you? I, I don't so... know what we're going to do with you. We've talked yeah. about this. Oh, darn, I'm sorry. I'll, I, I'll only do I I don't fight at wit's end, I swear. Um, <laughs> but that's because all they have is a Bible room. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> sorry, that's Mr. Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid tree. Mr. Whitaker's like, I'm a big boy, I can take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Poor. Yeah, he handled that like a champ. Like, he really did. Mm-hmm. I know. Really, he did. I yeah. mean, I can see like, I can see where he's coming from as far as, you know, they were all like, you know, going crazy, and it was obvious that doc- that Doctor Black wasn't really like. He didn't really seem to care much about like the whole safeguarding part of it, like. I don't think he, you know, it was obvious he was just using this as a ploy to get something out of it because he wasn't actually investing in like keeping the kids safe or mm-hmm. anything like that. Like if something happened yeah. to one of those kids, he would be held accountable as the business. But he obviously didn't really care because he was just using it as a way to like, you know, steal applesauce and sort of get into the community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, which, so I guess this is might be skipping ahead a little bit, but Something I didn't think about at the end of the episode, Blacker talks about how he's been trying to get into Odyssey for years and was going to buy yeah. the Fillmore Recreation Center. 
I mean, did he know that whatever was in the tunnels was there already? Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. I feel no, like because why know. else would he want that building so bad? Yeah, that's, that's true. Like, that's a good point. Like Applesauce was connected to it yet, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other than just a way into Odyssey to get near Wit, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, he made a big point about that building. Yeah, that's interesting because if he because Black Dude's after Applesauce, right? Not Wit's End itself. So yeah. why would he be trying to buy the Film Recreation Center if Jenny yeah. and Wit were also trying to? Yeah. And we mm, know from that. Name Not a Number and the rest of the Black Dude Chronicles that he also wanted the element to have the complete formula for TA four one eight. So did it already exist? Yeah. Mm. yeah, I wonder about that because I feel like it I did, bet it did. But I don't know. I bet he. I bet he knew. Mm -hmm. But also, Blacker's also really petty. So I'm like, so <laughs> yeah. Could yeah. That, it could have just been that he was angry that Wit was getting the building and he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, I want to know how he found out about applesauce in the first place. Like, we don't really have much of a backstory before this. No, we don't. Yeah. It's probably like well, an urban books. legend in the intelligence community. Yeah. And so, yeah. Maybe he had a friend on the inside or something. We had a friend on, or we had a spy <laughs> on the inside. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, we just blackered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, oh, yeah. we're not we're not going to rewrite Hamilton to the tune of Adventures in Odyssey this episode, unfortunately. Um, next episode. Great, though. Next episode. Next episode. <laughs> but like for now. <laughs> I love the joke that Eugene talks about a man of your he goes careful social oh, standing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I nice. love that very smooth yeah, very slick and, and then like, Eugene's oh. huffing and puffing yeah yeah. And come on Eugene keep like... up <laughs> oh, it's like me and I lost it so we can now, uh, so since Wit is in better shape than Eugene, but Eugene bikes to work every day, we can infer that Wit actually works out and most likely has a six pack. That's a cursed image. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'm just I'm just gonna come out and say, okay. We we like Jason, we like Richard, now we know who Matthew likes. I'm just well, <laughs> No, hang on, no, hang on, no 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 That's not what I <laughs> Oh no. That's not what I meant at all. Alright, um Oh, well, this is what you guys have missed with me not being on the podcast the couple of weeks. <laughs> anyway. Apparently so. Um, we can move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what happened next? They were at, they were at the I feel like the door. And they left. And then went and is Richard and, and Lucy. Yeah, it is. Right, yeah. Lucy's like, I don't, I feel bad about this. I... You know, I don't want to be a goody two shoes, but I want to be a goody two shoes. And he's like, suck it up, kid. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Stay you're so. so like, she's like, tri you know, she's basically tricking everybody and she sort of knows it. But she wants, like, you know, she wants him to like her and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yet, I one, of the things that, one of the things that frustrates me about this, um, so I'm skipping ahead a bit, but you know, when all, all of it's done, and um, Richard's in the hospital, and Connie and Lucy are talking, and Lucy's like, I just didn't want to be, you know, the girl who never doesn't, who only ever does, you know, the right thing, never does anything mm. wrong. And I feel like Connie totally got the wrong idea from that, because then she was like, nobody expects you to be perfect all the time. And I was like, personally, I don't think that it was about that. It wasn't about, it wasn't about everybody else thinking she had to be perfect all the time, and that, like, oh you know adults being like lucy you have to be perfect it's like the uh, the kids at school and stuff like you know you mm. act like a good kid you get treated like a you know you know you don't get treated very well 
You know what I mean? Mm. If you're like, you know, some little Christian girl that, you know, never does anything wrong, you don't get treated very well. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. the the need to just want to be quote unquote normal, just, just to be seen as a normal person, even just like by herself, you know, because obviously she feels like, you know, she won't, I feel like she probably feels like she's not going to, you know, she's missing out on something by being quote unquote like, boring, you know, not only living mm. this little Christian girl lifestyle. That's where I think yeah. that that's coming from. I don't think it was her trying to rebel against her parents or any of the adults in Odyssey who were like, oh, don't do this, Lucy. I think it was just, you know, she wanted, you know, to actually do something interesting. And mm-hmm. like, I feel like, so yeah. I feel like that's one of the things that, that annoyed sense. me. I feel like they addressed it as in, once again, oh, it's not a self worth issue, which it, which in my opinion it is. It's, yeah. It's you know you feel pressure from the adults for you to be perfect, and I don't know. It just annoys me that they sort of changed that around because I feel like that would have been a really great, you know, talking point, like an important thing yeah. to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know how mm-hmm. you know you you don't have to be a certain way in order to be wanted by someone. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it goes hand in hand a little bit with like Connie goes to camp though and she gets kicked out of camp because she was hanging out with someone who didn't follow the rules and she felt like mm-hmm. she was held to a higher standard than other people. And yeah, I feel like yeah. Yeah, I you experience that a lot when like your friend's parents don't care if they watch this show, but your parents won't let you watch the show, like that kind of thing. Exactly. So yeah, I yeah. Agree, like it maybe wasn't exactly this like angle that I would have gone, like a first show. Mm. It's almost like focus went at it from like the adults' point of view instead of the kids' yeah. point of view, like yeah, their target yeah. audience. Of course. It's, and it's a like bunch of kids. adults writing the show. So. <laughs> I, well, yeah, like I mean, I can't you can't really fault them too much, but I mean, still. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's like you were saying, you know, oh, your friend can watch the show, but you can't, or whatever. Like that was basically my life. Like my parents were like super, super, super like like overprotective about stuff like that, and I was like really sheltered for years and years. And so I always wanted to be like, oh, I want to do this, which I know my parents wouldn't approve of because it makes me feel like normal. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes yeah. me feel like the other kids, even though, I mean, I never did because I was too scared. So I really identify with Lucy in that point. You know what I mean? So for them to, I don't know, for them to like turn it around and be like, well, we're just going to sort of ignore the fact that that's obviously what's going on and we're going to turn it into like a, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm, a, a yeah. different thing, but it's not that big of a deal. It's just for some reason mm-hmm. for me that for some reason for me personally that bit always just frustrates me. But anyways, back to the yeah. scene we were actually <laughs> talking about. <laughs> yeah, going back to um, Blackard's castle, I think definitely like yeah. a weird vibe with Richard and Lucy. It is yeah. because it's like yeah. I think, I think, I can't remember where I read it, but I think somebody who worked on Odyssey said that at the time, Richard was like, he was in juvie, you know, at one, at one point, which means that he will have been, you know, he would have been younger than like, I don't know. I think somebody yeah. said that he was like run 19. Yeah. Or 20, think, when yeah. he did that stuff to Nicholas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was like 19, 20 or something. And uh, how old would you say Lucy is in this? Like, 13? 14, maybe? 14. 13, so 14. Because so her hard to tell. Really? She's in the middle. Right. She's in middle school after this, though. So. I see. Because she could be 13. 14. 13 is middle school. Yeah. Because yeah. her and Connie can't be that far off from age, can they? they? Really? Because I always think, like, her and, like, Donna and Connie are always somewhere, like, within, like, two years of each other. Yeah. I figure Connie is 15 in this one because I listened to Way Late in the Windy City after this one. And it mentions that all the stuff that happened was two years ago. And so I figured, okay, that makes Connie 17. So she probably was still 15 at this point. So if Donna and Lucy are, you know, um, you know, 13, that's only two years. It's not a whole Mm -hmm. lot different. Yeah. I mean, we obviously know that he cares about her a lot, and mm-hmm. it, it, right. it's not—it's not in the same way as like the way that she cares about him, and it's not necessarily like a full-on care. But you can see, like, you know, later on in the in the different albums when he randomly comes back 
during Tom's <laughs> like presidency stuff. You know, right. he you know yeah. he's going on about how he you know he cares about he doesn't want to get hurt and and it's like obviously you know I, you can believe that on the surface, but it, it's sort of like you wonder how much of that care is from guilt. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, like, I, th- I, I mean, I do believe that he does care about her. And you can totally yeah. feel sort of bad for what he's doing. But, like, you know, it, it does make you wonder. It just it just makes you wonder, you know, how much of how much of what he's doing is is because he actually cares or is it mostly out of guilt? I think it stemmed out of guilt, but I think, you know, it grew to actually caring about what was happening. Especially yeah, yeah. with, you know, all that he tried to do, you know, reconciling with Mr. Riley and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It kind of reminds me, like, Lucy and Richard remind me of Nick and Alex in, like, way later when, like, uh, like Alex thinks Nick is so cool. And at first Nick is like, hey, oh. yeah, okay, whatever. And then Alex, like, gets hurt because he's trying to imitate Nick. And then Nick's like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Oh, that kind of vibe. Just, like, realizing that this younger kid really does look up to you and that yeah. like, it's up to you to look out for them. Yeah. Well, speaking of the whole, like, similarities between characters, I feel like um, Richard and Blackguard are, like, they remind me of Buck and Skint. Because, you know, like, mm-hmm. towards the end, it was in, like, episode two, or part two, but, um, you know, both Buck and Richard at a point were like, you know, this has gone too far. We're hurting people. We're harming people. Yeah. We have to stop both black um blackguard and skint were like boy like don't you cross me you're nothing without me i do what i want mm. and they're both left with the the that choice point. of like what do i do mm. do i do the right thing or not mm-hmm. and it just brings me to the point that richard and buck should totally meet sometime because i feel like, we like need- i mean i don't know we need that like cool. Richard, Richard, Jason, and Buck like get together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be so fun. The tr- the trying Richard and the clock, and Jason is like, so that's where my cookies have gone. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! Yes, that'd be hilarious. The difference, I, I think, the difference between Richard and Buck, and that's in in that sense is, um, for Buck, Mister Skin is playing on that sort of love you know what i mean that like yeah. relationship between the two whereas blackguard and richard richard thinks he's already too far gone and doesn't he doesn't you know he he doesn't think he cares at all he already had a bad family life we learned that from the books i think and from him talking about how um when he came back to visit um when he came back to like apologize for pe- to, to people for what he did later on he mentioned how he was going. To, he wanted to go to his parents' house, but you know, only his mom wanted to see him or something like that. And you know what I mean. So we know he's already got a bad family life, and he just—I think he just doesn't care at that point. I mean, obviously he does care, like in his heart, but like on the surface, he's just stopped caring about whether yeah. somebody loves him or not. And to just you know, I mean. I think with Buck, he felt that way, but he had something to grasp onto that maybe Mr. Skint loved him. But with mm-hmm. Richard and Blackguard, I think it was obvious that Blackguard never loved him. You know what I mean? And there was no some sort of no like fatherly, you know, thing going on there. It was it was yeah. Richard trying to make up for the hole in his heart because of all the pain that had been happened to him and to other people, trying to fill that up by doing dodgy stuff. You know, you know. Yeah. 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 Wow, that was really deep. That was super <laughs> in you. depth. Like, dang. That's, That's why I didn't need to be here today. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah. And then Bucks is like, you know, doing a lot of it out of loyalty to Skint, whereas Richard is like loyalty to himself. Like he thinks he owes it to himself to do like weird stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's what I think. Dang. Nice. I love seeing Richard's like arc from like villain to antihero to hero, like throughout mm. all of the blackguard stuff. Because like he definitely starts out as a villain here, mm. and then he sees like 
that Blackard was just using him all along, and like he sees Wit sacrificing himself for him, and like that mm. kind of stuff. Yeah. But then we see in Wayland in the Windy City more of the like anti-hero type thing because he's still kind of doing some sketchy stuff, but like for better reasons. Like he does yeah, want revenge, yeah. but like I don't know, he is a little bit. He has a little bit better his, like, morals. His character, and, yeah, yeah. And then by the time like he's back in Odyssey again with jellyfish, he's like throwing himself out of a car and like saving Tom yeah. and all this stuff. So. <laughs> So what's what's next then? What happens after that? Um. Mm-hmm. So Richard and, Lu- oh, Richard and Lucy have talked at the. So the next thing. big thing I can remember happening is the first time they hack into yeah. Wit's right. yeah. yeah. Like, so Blackguard's putting a lot of pressure on Richard to get stuff out of Lucy, and then next thing Richard's got this friend at the phone company conveniently. Yeah. <laughs> And so they hook up a modem and hack into what's in. And Connie, when everything starts going crazy, like Katie Lee did such a fantastic yes. yeah. job of like capturing yes. that panic and chaos. That's so hilarious. good. Hilarious. Like, not again. Yeah. Get out. Get out. Everybody, panic. Panic. Yeah. <laughs> breathe. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, Connie. Can we just, can we just mention, like, I, that kind of hacking would not work whatsoever. Uh, like even five years after that episode yeah. was probably recorded. <laughs> like, and, and also the fact that Wit, I don't know, can you like he has an unput he has applesauce hooked up to an unprotected modem just in his <laughs> shop, just kind Legit. of vibing there, like like this top secret uh, national defense program <laughs> to be running displays for kids. On an unprotected modem, <laughs> like, I know. what a guy! <laughs> <laughs> I love the like dial-up sound. I'm like, oh, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, my sisters would be like, yeah. "What the heck is that? Like, what exactly. is that sound?" Uh, of course, they also like Jillian and Jason, cool. so I can't say much for them. <laughs> 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 Dang. Uh, no, they're very smart girls. I just, they're my sister, so I'm going to have to That's the joy of having siblings. <laughs> yes. I'm going to have to scoot in a second, but I just want to skip to the end really quick and ask. Do you guys think Wit actually got, like, deleted applesauce at this point? No. No, <laughs> no. Um, It comes um, back, doesn't it? And you can't, you can't tell me applesauce wasn't on the computer in Waylaid in the Windy mm. City. Do you think it actually was applesauce, like, mm, not anything else? I do think it was applesauce. Because what else is it? That's in true. Yeah. But I feel like all the other times we see applesauce, it's only like the illusion of applesauce. Mm. We never see it used. True. I don't know. True. That is and true. I don't- we never see the program in the yeah. Yeah. again. I think he probably has some sort of backup somewhere. Yeah. He says that he, he says I that mean, he didn't. But in as much as like as much as like Matthew was saying it's sort of weird that he had this all like unprotected. Yeah. Like he's not dumb enough not to have a backup copy or of it or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. he dedicated yeah. a lot of his life to this. Maybe he, you know, just mm-hmm. deleted it or stopped it from working for the displays and stuff and just yeah. kept the part of it or something. Because I feel like he didn't yeah. have the authority well, to delete that because he made no. it for the government. No. Exactly. So the government yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just... Well, and we kind of see applesauce in action in, at the end of Novacom because Tom types in applesauce into the imagination station. That's true. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So that could be actually applesauce. That's true. Mm-hmm. I just don't buy that he actually deleted it for good. <laughs> it's like Jason yeah. saying he left the agency. It's never really true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pop out now. So whoever wants to be in charge of ending oh. Craig, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> really- <laughs> the link is. <laughs> His name is Aram. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pull a curtain and Aram. <laughs>
yeah, I'm just whenever you're done, somebody's gonna have to do that. <laughs> Slick. All right. <laughs> We'll figure okay. it out. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Enjoy. And then there were four. <laughs> so what happened next? Where were we? So they've um, just they just done oh, they just she's happened still for crazy. The first time. Yeah, they just happened yeah. for the first time. Connie's freaking out. Mm-hmm. He gets everybody out, Wit comes back and it's like Oh, wait, and Eugene gets back, and it's, like, completely oh, dark, yeah. isn't it? Or did they get back from somewhere yeah. else? She thinks he's going to be angry at her for messing with it, but she didn't mess with it this time. Right. right. And so yeah. him and Eugene, when Eugene go up to the office and are trying to think of reasons yeah. why it happened. That's not until... Or something, or was that later? I don't... I think that's a little later. I feel like that's not until um the Imagination Station. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, Crazy. like, Wit and Eugene are, like, up working on it, and then Lucy yeah. comes right. back, yeah. and she's like, Mr. Whitaker, something okay. bad happens, and then, yeah. boom, scream, Lucy, and then shocked Pikachu face. Yeah. Because she got <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Literally in my face. <laughs> Can we appreciate the bone of Lucy? It's just like, oh, you're right, Connie. I am? Yeah, you're right. It's not any of your business. Yes. <laughs> like, dang. When she called Richard, a, or when she's like, Richard, you have to talk to him. I can't, you coward. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know that part always hurts. I'm like, ouch. Yeah. Yeah, because you already have He's sympathy like, for yeah. Richard. Like, yeah, I guess I am. All right, so then, so next, I guess... Lucy heads back to Blackwood's castle, and then Eugene and Wit start like debugging Applesauce to see. Oh no, they start entertaining the idea of a hacker, mm. and then we're like, "Hmm, we should go check the logs." And then Imagination Station. Somehow, I don't remember the. No, they do that after Lucy gets hurt. Right. Well, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. Yeah. And Wait, Lucy has to so overhear them first, so that's not that part's not happened yet. Yeah, so it's like she there was at some point she's going over to Blackguard's castle and she overhears Richard and Blackguard, um, Blackguard right. fighting about it. Oh yeah, because she goes down. Yeah, she go, she's looking around. I think she goes back to try and talk to Richard about something, and mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. she hears she she nobody she can't find them, so she goes downstairs and she can hear them arguing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's like, oh, Richard, yeah. have you gotten the patch from Lucy yet? And Richard's like, haha, no, but I've got it wrapped around my finger, so it'll be fine. And then she- oh, the password for level two. That's yeah, right. yeah. Yes. And, and then she runs off to go tell Mr. Whitaker. And then Blackard's like, oh, it was just the cat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sasha coming Sasha, in. Sasha, you bad cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sasha likes Lucy. Yeah, yeah, she was like, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover for you really quick. So get out of here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then somehow, like in the next scene, when uh, Blackwood is like petting Sasha, presumably with talking to Richard and kind of threatening him, somehow Sasha's presence just makes it that much more intimidating. Like just hearing this ominous <laughs> purr in the background. Yes. Yeah. It really is that, you know, when the bad guy's sitting in a chair and he turns around and he's got a cat in his lap and he's like, oh, I've been waiting for you. Exactly, yeah. You know, it's it literally that. Mm-hmm. Went full Bond villain there, like, exactly. what a guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, he is the the villain to Jason's James Bond. I applaud Odyssey for all their villains because, like, all of them, except for Glossman, he, they like all genuinely kind of intimidate me just for a little bit, but Blackguard mm-hmm. is just so evil and vile. Oh, I don't know if it was yeah. how he they wrote him or if his, it was his voice actor. He is just he intimidates me. I'm like you he's go. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's terrifying. He can make the word imagination station sound sinister and like get away with it. Like <laughs> you know, that's when. Terrifying. And they're bad. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love the scene after that, though. When so this it's the first part. I think after it's Lucy gets hurt. Then it does it end. Is that when the first part ends? Yeah. Yeah, it's like Lucy, and then. Lucy. Yeah, yeah that sounds right. Then funny. the 
first part of the second episode I loved when Richard goes to Black with like the newspaper. Mm-hmm. And he's like really angry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, look, 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 you know, look what we did. And Blacker just doesn't care. And he's like, oh, we'll send her some flowers. Does it say what room she's in? You know, trying to pretend like he cares, but it's like so obvious that he's just like, doesn't does care. not he care. Give less. That yeah. He's like nearly killed this little girl. And Richard's like really angry. And that, I think that that's obviously, you know, the point where he is like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't do any more of it. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like changes. Decides to go against it randomly all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, props to uh, Richard's voice actor for, like, sounding as distraught and, like, barely contained anger and whatnot throughout that entire scene, like... I oh, know, go off, Nathan. Honestly, like, I'm go off. Very... Wait, yeah, Nathan Carlson, yeah. What a guy. <laughs> They've got some great voice acting in these mm-hmm. episodes. I think it's just, you know, that too. I love, though... When we hear Whip pray, like at the very, very end of the episode. Now this is skipping like really <laughs> far ahead, but when he prays, there's something about it that makes it feel like very, I guess, 90s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. But I don't know. I, there's something comforting about it. I don't mm. know. And Whip prayed at the end of um, the mi- Miss the Ruse, the writer. Yeah. Ruse. Yep. But it didn't feel the same. I think it's just the voice actor. It just doesn't have that comforting tone. Yeah, it's like yeah. the specific. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Like, sorry, Andre Stoika, hmm. but. Yeah, I even wrote that. There's something about. I even wrote that down. Like, I love all three of the Wits um, voices. I feel like they all bring their like own thing to the table. But, like, I listened to Hal Smith talk today, and it literally felt like I was having a conversation with my grandpa. Just like felt, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Just got that wholesome tone. Yeah, yeah. There's something about Hal Smith, especially his voice is a little bit deeper than Paul Herlinger's was, mm-hmm. but it's just very comforting and like warm and brings you in. And I think there's like Andre Stoik, his there's something about his voice that's just not as it doesn't draw you in as much. Yeah, which is sad. Uh, so going on. So, I guess Blackard starts explaining with, like, he's been spending the past five years trying to get into its end and whatnot. Um, and then he starts threatening Richard, because Richard feels really bad about Lucy. So, he's like, I'll go tell the police. And mm-hmm. then Blackard's like, no, you Who do you know. think they'll leave? Exactly. An up-and-coming um, businessman, businessman or, like, a juvenile I... crony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I've built up my, you know credibility here and you're nothing more than a teenage uh, thug mm-hmm. and he's made it so he can pin everything on richard exactly, exactly. Yeah. like yeah. i think you know in that moment richard realizes like, stupid like how little he knows you know like how stupid he's been in during this mm-hmm. like as far as like actually knowing what he was getting into you know yeah yeah that's kind of where i got the buck and skin thing when he was saying, like, he, like, had it all planned, so, like, oh, well, you'll get in trouble, but I won't. Yeah. Like, That's really where I got that. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rip to you, but I'm different. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Um, also, at the end of that whole spiel, once Blackwood starts walking away, or Richard, I can't remember which one, Richard, like, under his breath is like, we'll see who squashes who. And then oh, later yeah, in the episode, see. he gets crushed by a Saphazoid machine. <laughs> Oh. Like, well, I guess Blackard got the final laugh in that particular area. Richard, hate to break it to you. I know. Mm. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's actually that's pretty good. Yeah, that's funny, really though. good writing. Karma. Like, sorry, Richard, but yeah. that's funny. <laughs> Rip to your legs, but, like, you know. <laughs> How did that not, like, I mean, he like still that? had them, so. Yeah. So, uh, I guess continuing moving on, uh, it it the scene then shifts to like Eugene and Wit, Wit starting to explain applesauce to Eugene and like I worked for the government and I own a bunch of Universal Press and 
Eugene starts listing his entire business history for some odd reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And with, like, you can Yeah, it was like, well, we don't, need, we don't have time to get into all that today. <laughs> what a guy. I don't think Wit likes to hear all his accomplishments, though, either. He's too humble, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. He'd be, like, the type of person, like, Jason would, like, hang, like, a certificate or something that Wit got at, on, like, the wall or something in the living room. And he'd be like, <gasps> no. Yeah. <laughs> Take it down. <laughs> And then Wit would like launch into something about storing your treasures up in heaven and not on and not of the things of this earth. And then Jason yeah. would be like, "Okay, yeah, Dad, don't worry, I know." I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So then they start. Then they're like, "Oh, could it be like? Look at the logs. Could it be a hacker?" And then they're like, "Richard." Then they're like, "Oh, it did get yeah. hacked." And who? Who could hack us? Yeah. And has ill intent. Like, come on. You guys should be able to get yeah. like on like immediately. It shouldn't have taken that much yeah. deduction. Um and I, I, I like how wit like when they both say Richard at the same time, wit's cause that kinda like like it's an epiphany, like, oh Richard. And then Eugene is just like, Oh, it's Richard, like as if he's resigned to it. Like, ah, oh, darn it, not again. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like, not this guy again. Richard Maxwell! Richard. Yeah, exactly. That's typical wit oh. fashion. Like, I have an epiphany every time I say something. Woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, but I thought wit always knew what was going on and happening. <laughs> that sounded like a line Jana would say. I <laughs> 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 Yeah, exactly. I mean, we all want to be Jason, but let's get real. I'm probably Jana. <laughs> right. Or maybe I'm Jerry, but alive. Oh. Oh, that is so cool. You gotta do that to me. <laughs> oh. Sorry. We're gonna hit you right in the feels in this episode. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're gonna hit every character that's ever made you. Yeah. Like I'm gonna put that on the disclaimer when I upload it to Tumblr. Be nice. um fair warning, have a tissue on hand. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't gotten that sad. No, but yet. we can make it worse. All right, oh, let's no. go, guys. We, can <laughs> we got time. <laughs> we got uh, time. We can wrench every tear duct out of you, but wait, no. <laughs> Never mind. It sounded <laughs> it sounded a lot better in my head, which is kind of worrying. Um so anyway, they're like, Richard Maxwell! And then, um, I don't know, they go check the logs, I'm assuming? Eugene gets all the No, that's after they've checked the logs. Cyber tracking down thingy. I'm like, Eugene Meltzner tracking hackers since the early days, because, like, in a couple of recent albums ago, he was, like, helping him track down some cyber people i'm like yeah you go mm -hmm. nice yeah, yeah. well he also didn't he, didn't he also do that when he stopped working at wit's end and then went back to campbell uh co community college that yeah hang on no um, maybe that's like when like he was like running away from andromeda or whatever like in novacom right yeah yeah yeah, because I know he was working on, like, the brain radio wave thingy. Mm -hmm. And then, but, I don't yeah. know. Anywho. Anywho. All right. So, we go. They do things, and then. I think. Sorry. Yep. Don't they go to the hospital after they figure out who it was? Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Cause... And that's when she tells them it was Richard, and they're like, we already yeah. know! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I guess they go to confront them, and that's when Richard, or Blackard's castle's on fire. Oh, so they're on the way to the hospital when... Oh, or... well, I always thought, but maybe they are on the way to the hospital. Maybe they're on the way back to the maybe. hospital? Because they go to the hospital to see Lucy, and then it, the episode ends. Is Lucy admitted from the hospital then? Like, she goes and sees Richard when he's in the hospital? Because where does she have that conversation with him? I'm... I'm pretty sure the conversation with between her and Richard happen beforehand, and then 
that kind of spurs Richard on to like yeah. screw you, Blackard, and then yeah, okay. it does, it does, it does yeah. because she goes he, um, yeah. she's in the hospital. This is yeah, this because this is after so Richard's, you know, because it sort of time skip, you know, jumps around because Odyssey episodes, so it skips between like little scenes, and you know, a lot of them are happening like at the, and Richard has come back from his talk with Blackard, and he's all angry. And he goes to visit Lucy in the hospital with, mm-hmm. like, you know, to go in, just check on her. And it's, like, pretending that he's not there, but, like, cares or anything, you know? He's just there, you know, just to... He was in the neighborhood, you know? Passing yeah, through. just, you know, in the neighborhood, just making sure you're okay, trying to pretend, like, you know, I think he's trying to deny himself. I mean, he, mm-hmm. you know, anyways... And, yeah. you know, that's when they have the argument. She's like, oh, you coward. Saying, I'll make it right, I'll make it right. And she's saying, you can make it right. Mr. Whitaker's on his way here now. Yeah. Uh, right, yes, Whitaker's yes. On, Mr. Whitaker's on his way. You can talk to him then. But Richard gets scared and leaves. And she's like, oh, you coward. And he's like, I will make it right, you'll see. And then how he tries to make it right is by, you know. Self-destructing. Um, black d- d- uh, yeah. Burning. Uh, Blackheart's castle to the ground. So mm-hmm. I think it's probably what happens is, yeah, there, um, Mr. Whitaker is on the way back from the hospital and mm-hmm. then sees that it's on fire. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Because he figures out what's probably happened. Yeah. yeah. How. How how does Wit know to to run into the burning building to look for people? Like I think he probably no. he, he, they're Sorry? probably you know, like the firefighters or whatever, and he probably asks, "Is anybody in there?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, I don't think anybody's there yet. I think he probably saw it and just had a Wit drive past oh, it and see Blackard's castle. Fire, on. Oh yeah, because you can hear the no no yeah because you can hear the sirens. Coming yeah. to the building when Rin, Richard, Richard, and Wit are talking, so that they haven't come yet. So he just yeah. decides mm-hmm. to randomly go in to see if anybody's there. Just oh yeah, because I guess because that's what him and Connie did when uh, Tom's barn went up in flames. He went around and checked to see if like the horses and Tom were in there. Yeah, if anybody was okay. Mm-hmm. So he just went in and saw Richard there. And Richard yeah, out, and then he was like, oh, you know, check to see if Blackard is. Richard's like, what about Blackard? So they try to find him, but it's too late. They can't, so they come out. And Wit's all like, oh, you're worth saving, Richard. Yeah. Oh, that hit different. Yeah. Like, I know, that, that really did. Yeah. That's so oh, sweet. Why did you save me? He's like, one, you've got a lot to answer for. And I like how Richard just resigned to that. He's like, yeah. And? And he's like, oh, and, you know, you're worth saving. And I think, you know, that I'll to hear that. After mm-hmm. believing for like a long time that he wasn't worth keeping around, or you know, yeah, yeah, safe. I always get the feeling that he was never told that you know he was worth something like he, yeah, important as a person, Probably yeah, not. yeah. But if we go back, we can talk about the scene where Richard literally just destructs. Blackard yeah. castle. I love how he does it so he can pin it on Blackard. He's like, oh, I didn't do it. I know. Yeah, I that was really well done. Crafty. I love his little, like, chuckles, and he's like, and he's like, um, oh, I can't wait to see what's finally mine, or uh, I can't wait to get what's finally mine. That And, but, and Richard's like, oh, oh yeah, you're, you're, you'll get what's coming to you, alright, or something like yeah. that. And does this, like, yeah. <laughs> like, little laugh, oh, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, but the the quips in that like one scene are like iconic. Oh no! Yeah, I was like, yeah. and for your listening and dining enjoyment, Man. the alarms have gone yeah. off, which can only mean one thing: the building's the on building fire. On fire. <laughs> yeah, like uh, ten out of ten. I really yeah. enjoyed that bit. I love you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> there, it, there it is. We, we were all waiting. <laughs> Richard in the background, I love you too, Abby. <laughs> Think of everything that's going on. Like me as a parent have like gone through like Nova exactly. and Blackguard. Like think about the the odd kids we have an Odyssey now 
might have just been born when Blackguard came mm, around. Mm. That's kind of crazy. But that's what you think about. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's only, I mean, it's only been about 10 to 12 years since the beginning of Odyssey and Odyssey time. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Uh, have we got to the end of the the, the battle? Like, have we been to the Pretty end? Pretty much. I, I mean, I think we're yeah, kind like, of there. And then the episode ends. We're just kind of floundering this week. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the episode ends. I love the ending, though. It's Whit praying that things get back to normal, and then you hear Eugene and Connie yeah. picking yeah. in the background, and he just chuckles, and it's like, thank yeah. you, God. Yeah. <laughs> I can uh I, I I really tried to listen on my second listen through to see what Wit and or Wit and Connie, what Eugene and Connie were arguing about. And Connie's like, oh, you drive me crazy. It's and Eugene is like, if we could find what makes you crazy, I'd be very happy to find that out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dang, dude. I love um, their arguments. They're hilarious. They're the best. Eugene be like, I'm a savage. <laughs> 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 oh, that oh. just brought up a very cursed image of animated cursed Eugene. Image take two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cursed image take two. Can... Eugene Kardashian. That <laughs> scream. That scream sounds like it was fading away. It sounded like he just got like chucked off a cliff or something. <laughs> <laughs> like in the cartoon when someone falls, it's like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wiley, coyote, coyote style. So I guess that's the Yay. end. That is our very <laughs> bad discussion of the battle that was yeah. all of Oh, uh, Emily, you're going to have a time having to chronologize all of our. I'm not going to chronicalize it. <laughs> ah! Chron- chronologicalize? Yeah. Chronologize. So do you want to know what? Next week's episode is yes. Yeah. Next week we'll be doing Flash Flood and Ice Fishing. It's a special two-story episode. And next week is our tenth episode. <gasps> yeah, tenth anniversary. Woo! Hey. That's kind of sick. That is. Should make a cake. You guys you should really eat it. <laughs> I'll send you guys a picture and then I'll enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could all get cupcakes. Yeah, we could all make and, cupcakes. Like, get a candle. Cup- yeah. That'd be kind of funny. Just have a picture. Yeah. <laughs> send a picture sick. of us. Send a picture. Each of us send a picture of us with a cupcake. Then we edit them yeah. all together as together eating cupcakes. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, we're all actually together, we swear. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we really need to start doing shout outs to people who have emailed I was about us. to say oh. that. And um, Matthew's fan club. So a shout out to Sarah from Texas. Oh. Who emailed us. And Grace's cousin Mary, I think was her name. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Right? Like, yep. She, that was so sweet. She um, she apparently says Matthew is her favorite, and I'm not, but her I'm convinced. Your second, your second <laughs> is running to me, Matthew, though. Just keep I, that. In the you know, head. I'll take <laughs> second place. I, oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, I think that's all our shout out. Yeah, I, I think, think we've only it. ever had contact with all right. shout out to people. Thank oh. you all so much for the support. And Addie, who wants sent us an email yeah i know yeah thank you to anyone that sent us any sort of dms or anything because you guys i mean like there's not that many people that are part of the tumblr aio fan aio fandom but since we started this like you know all the people have been yeah we really do appreciate yeah, I think, you all very yeah. much you're yeah. awesome if any of you know, our listeners have come to tumblr because they heard our podcast like hit up our tumblr and tell us that because it has felt like the past week or so we've had several people join in randomly oh, yeah. i want to know yeah and if you're out there reveal yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah come join I the chaos she did then, didn't she? exactly <laughs> yeah yeah really thank you to all our listeners and our fans you mean the world to us we love you yeah. you're all amazing yes, we love you we appreciate you so much. Woo!
All three of All you. Th- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Wait, what's the Veggie Tales ending? God made you special. God made you special, and He and loves you, love you very much. Very much. <laughs> oh man, wait, that was a prayer, right? Or no? I don't remember. <laughs> no. It's been a while since I watched Veggie Tales. Well, that's a lie, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, disclaimer: we're also not affiliated with Focus on the Family, by the way. Please don't ever think that. Today's episode was brought to you by Aram, the recording bot. We're we are chaos. Chaos. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.